All right, it's cool. I will, um, I'll go ahead and start recording again. And um, maybe you want some nice music. Yeah, I just wanted to like chill out and talk to my bros here with uh, some music playing for a little while. <laughs> this character is already stronger than your hill orc. Yeah, Talus. You know, I, I want to disagree with you, but I don't. All right, you guys ready to see some super simple, super simple, straightforward DCSS? This is a deep dwarf fighter. Just wanted to vent about BS out of depth spawns. Yeah, pretty much. That sucks about that game, Anani Badger. Bro, look at this. Bro, look at this plate mail right off the bat. Oh, man. T1 plate, fuck. <laughs> Every DD game is like this. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, these are... <laughs> Why am I worried? Dude, I was like, oh no, these, these hobgoblins have weapons. But then I remembered I'm just like a, a king pimp deep dwarf and I don't give a singular shit. For your collection. Alright, Reagan, I'll check this out here in a bit. Maybe I'll play it on stream later. I was trying to find this, like, funky techno group that it was like this funky techno album that, that sounded like video game music, and I just couldn't find it. I could have sworn I had it bookmarked. I can't remember the name of it uh, for the life of me. I think it actually had funky in it. Maybe Talus knows what I'm talking about. He's the music uh, the music expert. No, that's not it. It was like a... The album had like some kind of freaky zombie dude on the, um, on the cover, if that helps. I don't know, man. This is pretty obscure. All right, Ragoon. See you around, man. Thanks for stopping by. We've taken zero damage so far, despite fighting multiple dudes with weapons. <laughs> what about removing shield? Uh, no, the, the fighter's shield, it's wild. People remove them a lot, and I don't understand why they do it. Like, the, your instinct probably is like, oh, well, I want to um, I want to have faster attacks, but shield blocks up to three attacks per rounds, man. It's like, I'll use the heaviest shield if I'm not casting... Like, the only thing that stops me from using a shield, speaking of which, I'm going to prove my point right now. Oh, look, it's a large shield. Putting it on immediately. <laughs> you know, unless, unless it's stopping me from casting, I don't give a shit, man. Like, shields are awesome. What a weak character. I'm only a deep dwarf who found plate and a large shield on D1. I want to. I want to do over. <laughs> okay, this is a. I think this is an Oka altar. Let's lure this crap out. Uh, I'll redefine this to AF. Actually, you know what? I'm going to redefine... I'm just going to clear the spacebar macro. That's usually... Um, that's usually rest for me, but this dude doesn't want to rest. Oh, adders. Um, should I might? Yeah, don't remove shield on fighter. I'm actually going to might here, because this could be annoying. I probably didn't have to, but I could be missing so much. Holy shit. Strength. <laughs> I don't know if these adders can even fuck with 11 AC. Yeah, I probably didn't need to do that. Uh, we use our first heal and we get drained immediately. That sucks. This is this feels so strange, man. Playing a deep dwarf. I don't even know how to do it anymore. Do we want to take Trog? Um, we could take Trog if we wanted to. It's a really obnoxious DD game, but we could do it, you know. Also, I broke my rules. I'm supposed to be using these scrolls first before we do anything else. This is just how reckless I'm allowed to play on account of being a deep dwarf. I need, I need, I need this deep dwarf game to cleanse my palate. Alright, we got lignify, mutation, flight resistance. 
I'm not going to take Frog. We're we're going to take. We're going to wait for Mockleb. I got to show off the true, the true fun of playing a Deep Dwarf, where you just pad your score. <laughs> That's an adder. Look at me trying to cast spells. I can't cast spells. Just tab him. The other thing about adder poison is like, not only is it going to have trouble getting through my AC, um, I'm a deep dwarf, dude, so I have, I have that damage shaving. And damage shaving makes poison into kind of a joke. Truly the Kobe Bryant of crawl races just putting up the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. I'd like to find a wand soon so I could train Evo. Alright, we have a null pack. This, this could actually cause me issues. Um, if one of them had... Um... A net, so we'll pull this dude all the way to the next floor. Try to melee him to death. Okay. I'll heal up. Doesn't take my mana this time. Buckler time? Why would I wear a buckler instead of a uh, large shield, man? <laughs> Talus, you have to understand, I'm, I'm, I've been playing actually tough combos for the most part throughout this streak, so. I have to recalibrate for DD, DD5 easy modes. I love turning off my brain when I play DD, it's zen. I mean, if you want to play the thinking's, thinking man's DD... Just play yourself a Che DD. Pull this dude up. I would rather off myself than play without Mach, Talus says. Um, I've played with Trog, it's not bad. I've played with Eli, it's kind of annoying. Um, i played with Rue, again, kind of annoying, but doable. I want to find this... There he is. Alright, this is stupid. Let's not engage this thing. Um, <laughs> considering that, that heal wounds actually can fail. Uh, I'm kind of being suicidal trying to engage him. Yeah, Memer, we lost the Hill Orc, dude. Um, I mean, I could talk about why. I'm probably going to do like a retrospective stream as to, as to why, but um, there's not much to say, really. Like, we tried to... It was a no-lair run. It's going to be a crapshoot, you know? Like, what, what can you say about a run where you're trying to skip lair and you go straight to depths and then you get swarmed and killed? I mean, Roseman must be halted. Gamma Funk hacked into the game and killed the orc. You know, um, you're joking about that, but like, for a brief, for a brief moment last night, I thought I was getting DDoSed because, because I was streaming and like my stream suddenly just like ground to a halt. Uh, I'm going to make sure that, well, I was going to re-macro 5 to, like, not rest, because I don't want to rest by mistake and waste turns, but it doesn't really matter. They downvote my ISP. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously, though, I wouldn't, like, I know it sounds a little paranoid, but, like, I would not, believe it or not, I would not put it past some of the people in this community to get like so mad at me that they that they TDOS my system. It just wouldn't surprise me is all I'm saying. But this guy does not have a ranged weapon or a reach weapon, so I'm happy to engage him. And by the way, check it out. D3 branded war axe. 
What a game. Uh, why do people hate you so much? Who did you hurt? Um, well, I, I've been trying to bitch about this stuff less on stream, but um, I can, like, talk a little bit. Like, basically, <laughs> tell us not this story again. Um, I mean, I don't have to talk about it. Stop, Grandpa, not this story. Well, speaking of good stories, how about the story of Sigmund coming to um, own my ass? The fragile Fifi's were hurt. I don't want him to confuse me. We don't actually have curing potions, or we probably don't. We might. Let's make it to a staircase. Just kill this clown. That's what you think I can do, but... Alright, identify... Alright, I do have two potions of curing. Identify... 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 I'll even identify the ring, I guess. Pro cold. Three enchant weapons, yeah, that's pretty sick. I guess we could just melee him. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Do we want to go ahead and enchant up the freezing war axe? I guess I should. It's not super likely that we'll find a broad axe anytime soon. Although I tell you, I think I think in many of my runs I would have just like delayed, just out of pure greed because DD5 is so easy. Enchant weapon, you should you shouldn't ever delay it. Um, it's just that like. DD5 is such an insane combo that you can break all the traditional rules and still win. I mean, you can talk about it being the wrong play, but then you're basically pretending this is a real game of Dungeon Crawl. Hey, so Egypt has a Wand of Clouds, but bruh, I'm not playing in Trunk, so I'm safe. Now I have a Wand of Clouds. Turn on Evocations. But yeah, I'll, um, Anani Badger, I can tell you the easy version of the story, and I can, I can distill the whole story down to, to one sentence so that it's not just me, like, complaining for an hour or, like, t telling people stuff they already know. Um, basically, there are people on the internet with very fragile feelings, um, you know, and if you're, if you're a person with opinions, uh, or maybe a person who likes to state his opinions in a way that is not handled with, like, the kiddiest of kid gloves. Um, people will complain. And there are people on the internet where if you disagree with them, they will take that as a personal attack. And some, some of those people, unfortunately, are the devs of this game. Um, some people, if you disagree with them, in a way that makes them look bad, uh, maybe if they're doing, like, bad things, will go out of their way to try to wreck your reputation uh, as a sort of punishment for disagreeing with them too much. Um, and again, some of those people happen to run this game, so that's, as Memer says, fuck Jannies. Um, that's, that's pretty much the basic idea, like, I, again, I don't, I don't think I should, I don't think I should get into specifics because I've already talked about it quite a lot, um, and I'm sure Talus doesn't want to hear it again, but, um, it is it is pretty frustrating because like these people know what they're doing, you know they're they're well aware that the the stuff they say about me is completely false, um, but they say it anyway because it's a convenient way basically to try to kick somebody they don't like out of a community. I think it's um, I think it's unethical, I guess, like not a very nice thing to do. The one sentence summary is the DCSS devs are Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, they do it for free. They consume large amounts of Hot Pockets. Look at me just shitting all over this D4. I just found Grinder and I'm not even worried. This is the magic of playing a... Like, I'm just gonna tab Grinder. Look at this. Look at me tabbing Grinder. I don't care. Go ahead and paralyze me. Do it. Do it, bruh. I guess that could have been bad. I don't have our negative yet, but... I mean... Whatever. 
am I really going to lose a DD5? Oh, Jenny is a meme from like 4chan and other places like that, various anonymous image boards. Um, and I know I'm not, I'm not supposed to explain this stuff, but <laughs> it's uh, basically the idea is like, it's just people on the internet who take themselves way too seriously and happen to have moderator power, right? Yeah, I'll be happy to tell you on Discord if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it on stream too. I'm just, I think that some people get annoyed by me uh, talking about it a lot. And like, while this is my stream and I'm just going to do what I want, um, I also don't. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to, um, basically bore people, I guess. Um, but yeah, Janny is a meme about like, just like dickhead moderators on the internet who take themselves way too seriously and go out of their way to censor everything. Like almost every discord server is run by people who, who, who you could aptly describe as Jannies or janitors, you know? Cursed. Oh, I don't actually have remove curse. I thought I did. Whoops. Oh shit, we don't have remove curse. I guess we're stuck with the plus zero chainmail of darkness. That's uh, plus zero, but it's, it's not bad. It's got strength on it. It's got our poise. I'll take it. I should have identified it. I'm just playing super risky because I have no fear. Yeah, I mean, Talus, I've always I've always thought about this. Like you have to you have to wonder about the kind of person who um moderates a space for free and carefully controls what people are allowed to say in that space. You know? Um And it's like, it's either that's a person who really cares about that community, or that's like a narcissist type who just likes imposing their will on other people. And unfortunately, I think the narcissist types are a little bit more common than anything else, really. We have no mock lab alter yet. Malcolm is a Janny on Rogue Lights. <laughs> The streamer literally gets paid and they Janny for free. That's true. I mean, I don't get paid that much, but... People are kind enough to donate, and I do appreciate it every single time. It's very cool and generous stuff. Salty McScrub is an especially large champion in this regard. Buying subs for my, uh, my other followers left and right, like the champion that he is. If I could clone Salty like 20 times, I think I would. I should give you the champion role, Salty. I don't know if you can make custom rules in uh, Twitch, but maybe. Um, I should go upstairs and reset this fight. I may be a deep dwarf, but ogres with giant spiked clubs still scare me a little bit. Some streamers on here make tons of money and they have tons of jannies. Well, you know, as, as much of a big... Like, I'm big on free speech, okay? And that's another reason, you know, it's very easy to piss people off on the internet inadvertently just by being big on free speech. Like, I've been called all kinds of really horrible things by not, not just people in the Dungeon Crawl community, but just in general on the internet because people have this... Um, I don't know, man. Pe people are very very good at thinking in black and white terms, you know, and by that I mean, like, it's always red team versus blue team, you know, A versus B, this group versus that group, and it's like if you're, you know, it's like, it's like one of those shitty Star Wars prequel movies where it's like, you're either with me or against me, you know, these people have no concept of, of nuance, you know, um, so it's like, I just think that people, whether you're like a leftist or a right-leaning person, you know, or maybe somewhere in between. Whatever your politics are, unless you're threatening somebody directly, 
I think you should be you should have the legal right to say it. And I also think that social media companies are a little bit too powerful, or maybe a lot too powerful, because they kind of get to be able to control what people say in the modern public squares, you know, on the internet. That's my whole thing, right? That's something I'm hugely into. It's one of the reasons I'm into Bitcoin and whatnot. And by the way, this is like this is not a conservative opinion. This is not a liberal opinion. This is just like, well, I guess it's classically liberal, but like the point is, this is like, this is an opinion that's just like, I believe in free speech. You know, I think that people should have the right to say what they want, even if it offends you, you know, even if it's, even if it's nasty, because unpopular speech is the kind of speech that needs to be defended. Somebody saying that they love rainbows and kittens, you know, that's not controversial. Nobody's going to complain about that. That doesn't need speech protections. You know, it's, it's unpopular speech. It's controversial speech. Stuff that I would personally find reprehensible even, I would defend, you know? Hey, it's mock lab. All right. So, like, because I find myself saying things like, well, I don't think this person should be, like, thrown in the slammer for, for saying something nasty, um, <laughs> just saying stuff like that can make people, like, I've been called a Nazi, man, like, on the internet. No joke. And I'm, obviously, I'm not, I'm not a fucking Nazi. Um, I mean, like, it's, it's just ridiculous. I have a cat allergy. We need to burn all cats. <laughs> oh no! Don't don't mess with the kitties. There's this cute little cat that keeps hanging out in front of my house. He deserves to be petted. Do I want to? Do I want to try for this? Um, do I have Telly? Yeah, I do. Scatter shot. That's not a wand of flame, <laughs> bro. Okay, uh, I'll heal, I'll open this, I'll use one of my mini MOs. I guess I'll clouds these dudes. Close the door, and why did the cloud get destroyed? That's interesting. Whatever, I'm just gonna scattershot him, fine. Do we have flight? Yeah, we do. Not sure if that was worth it, but I guess we got scatter shot. By supporting cats, you are oppressing me and shaming my disabilities. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though, man. Like, I, I know you're just joking around, but that's like the, that kind of ridiculous stuff is the end result of. Well, I guess that doesn't really have anything to do with freedom of speech, but. Oh, see you, Mr. Alstrom. Yeah, sorry. I guess I guess I kind of got on a tangent here. I'm just talking about like how, how easy it is to offend people on the internet without even trying to, you know? Um, it's like, I don't think that my opinions are really that controversial, or at least they shouldn't be, you know? I, I'm making no statement, really, other than one sort of in support of like the, the actual constitution of the, of the country that I'm in, you know? I don't, I don't think that's like a wild and crazy thing to be saying, but people seem to think it is, you know, or they think that you're some kind of crazy, like, extremist or something just because you think that people shouldn't be locked up for saying stuff, you know. Check it out, we're going to random effects from the staircase because it's safe. Okay, he went invisible, let's, let's go up. It goes way back before the Constitution. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. Socrates would even argue that men needed to be able to discuss anything. Right, exactly. I mean, this is like Greek philosopher type stuff. And all of the wisest philosophers have always suggested that, you know, it's like the real question is, do you even have like a civilization, right? Do you have a civilization if people are afraid to speak their minds, you know, if unpopular opinions, if you can't, um, if you can't say something unpopular, do you, do you really have a civilization, or do you have, you know, some kind of weird dystopia? You know? <laughs> to me, like, right now, it's like, it's horrifying to me that... Okay, so I'll give you an example. I make a lot of my money on the internet, right? Oh, let me answer this. Hey, this on this DCSS stream, how about I answer this DCSS question? Um... Anani Badger is asking me, I have one RF pip, how do I get through this? And he's showing me a picture of the wacky little vault with, um, like, flame clouds that spawn on each side of it. 
you kind of have to walk through three lines of flame to reach whatever the stuff in the middle is. All I see are two gold piles and a scroll. Um, I would just ignore that until later, until you have enough hit points that you just don't care. Um, an RF pip will probably let you walk through it if you have enough, um, if you have enough hit points, you know, you'll probably be fine. And you can sort of time it right, like walk in right as it's ending, or right after it ends, and you'll be able to skip at least one uh, cloud, but n none of that stuff really looks worth it to me to, um, to bother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just wouldn't go in. Oops. Oh, shit. Let's pull this stuff up. Actually, Prince Ribbit is a joke right now, because I've got RC, or excuse me, I've got a freezing weapon, and this will freeze this dude. He'll be slowed as soon as I hit him. Right? You slash Prince Ribbit, you freeze Prince Ribbit. I guess there's only a chance to slow him. Why is he not getting slowed? He's cold-blooded, right? Okay, there we go. But he teleported. It implies that civilization has already attained truth as its basis for how it functions, which we can see for modern society. There's enough contrast for that to be false. Well, um, in my country, in America, uh, politically speaking, this country feels more divided than it has the entire time that I've been alive. Everything is politicized. You know, um, if... <laughs> If, if you're on the right, then the people who disagree with you call you a Nazi. If you're on the left, people who disagree with you call you a communist. Although sometimes that's, I guess, literally true. And it's also literally true on the other side sometimes, to be fair. Um, but, I mean, my, my fundamental thing is, like, you know, you're talking about truth, but, like, I think that people should have the right to make mistakes, man. And I think people should have the right to come to their own conclusions um, and what I really wish is that I really wish people could be more civil with each other. You know, um, I hate the fact that nine times out of 10, if I try to have a discussion with somebody who disagrees with me on the internet about any kind of controversial issue, um, it's, it's eventually going to devolve into name calling nine times out of 10. And I don't even think that's an exaggeration. So it's, it's really rough, you know, <laughs> it's not a fun time for anybody really. So I'm curious, like, I don't know, it's, it's like it's more fun to yell at people. People seem to think it's more fun to yell at people than to try to make some kind of connection, you know, try to, <laughs> you two do head, <laughs> try to, like, have an adult conversation with people, you know. And it is fun. It is, obviously it is, of course. We've evolved to do this, you know. Human beings evolved in tribes, uh, which were basically either at war with other tribes or avoiding them all the time, so... It doesn't surprise me that people get a lot of joy out of, like, shitting on each other on the internet. I just wish it wasn't the case, you know? I think it would be a way better world, one where people could actually walk away from each other and think, like, I disagree with that guy, but I don't hate him. You know what I mean? Like, is that, is that too much to ask for? You know? Is that, is that, like, is that like a wild and crazy request? Because I don't want it to be, you know? And I feel like once upon a time we had something, like, approximating that, even within my lifetime, but it's just like gone. Oh shit, dude, we could be paralyzed. Um, I'm gonna scattershot this, there we go. Just <laughs> playing and talking at the same time. Am I losing viewers for uh, going on a tear about freedom of speech, or am I losing viewers because I'm playing a deep dwarf, a brainless uh, deep dwarf? <laughs> which, which is the thing that's happening here? I actually really like the Sasuari. Um, I can't really show it off that much on a deep floor where I'm just tabbing through everything, but I think it's really thematically neat the way there's like spectral dudes on this side and simulacrums on the other side. I'm 
Man, if we had if we had blink. Interesting. Um, I do not want this plus eight scimitar, believe it or not. As neat as it is. If it, if we had blink. We could like blink out of this and get ourselves nets, you know. But we don't. Is there anything I can do? So that rips the net. I I don't know if it's possible to even dodge them anymore. Like I think you have to blink out of them. If you want the net. What a reward for people who have uh, plus blink on an item, you know? Or uh, the spell itself, of course. By the way, I'm on... Um, I had this character parked on Kelby, so we don't have meme available. Because uh, Floraline is a jerk. But um, I was going to look up. I was going to look up what my streak is at, but I can just tell you it's um, three, four. This is the fifth win. All right, Anani Badger, have fun, man. Thanks for coming by the stream, dude. Getting funding. See, no, see, now you can make more money and then you can give it to your favorite streamers, right? <laughs> oh, cool, we have one to flame now. Oh, man, that sucks. That sucks, Anani Badger. Keep grinding, though, man. You'll, you'll make it. We're all going to make it, bruh. God, what a breath of fresh air this game is after that hill orc venom venom page. <laughs> Just like really straightforward, smashing through the game, you know. Also, I gain hit points when I kill things now, so. You can pretty much just sustain through these fights. Well, this tabbing is great. Know anyone who's looking for an Ethereum order book backend or an Ethereum node API endpoint? Let me know. Um, I do not. Although, if you guys need like a freelance developer, <laughs> I do. I do that, and I know blockchain stuff. See, this is great, Salty. This is awesome because um, I love the fact that I love the fact that it's like people hanging out and just something as simple as a Twitch um, a Twitch stream can sort of network with each other, you know. And you wouldn't think that would happen in something like this because it's just like a video game. But that'd be so cool if you could help them out, man. We're going to try to pair this thing. It succeeds. Probably shouldn't be tabbing quite so wildly since, um, in theory, something could have like a para wand or, you know, bad things could still happen. It's not really likely, but they could. Like this. I shouldn't have tabbed into this um, two-headed ogre. 
are going to be looking for devs depending on what happens, so ping me with your skill set and what you're comfortable working with. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. Hit me up on Discord. I can, we can have a nice chat. Um, I mean, I haven't um, built a bunch of blockchain apps or anything yet, but like, you know, I set up my own lightning node a while back just to mess around with it. I, well, I made this thing, um, I adapted the, all right, so you've heard of Reddit, um, Reddit Place, where it's, uh, it was like this um, canvas board where people could collaborate to draw things, and I took, I took this thing. I took this version of it that was open source and I hooked it up with a lightning node. I called it lightning pixels. I don't think I'm hosting it anymore on lightningpixels.com, but what I did was I hooked it up and I wanted people to pay like one Satoshi, which is like a millionth of a Bitcoin or something like that, or like one cent for each pixel that they, uh, that they placed. And I got the whole thing working. I never actually put it on the main net. I only had it running on test net, but, um, it was more of like, I wasn't expecting to make actual money off of it. I just wanted to do it to kind of see if I could pull it off. You help the hackers known as Fortune program out the API painting programs. Nice. Some other simple apps in Ethereum. Yeah, Salty Man, like Solidium is, is that what it's called? Solidium? Not, not selenium, but solid, solidity, solidity. From my understanding, I haven't actually looked at it much, but um, my understanding is that it's uh, very prone to, like, some of those contracts are extremely sketchy. And I have to wonder if that's the fault of the language being obscure or just the people who write the, the contracts, you know, the Ethereum contracts. I don't know Golang, by the way, uh, Anani Badger, but like, that doesn't scare me at all. Like, I could pick up a programming language in a couple of days if I feel like it. I have a master's degree in computer science, so like, what I used to tell people is that getting a degree in CS, you know, that doesn't really teach you a particular language, although I guess it does. It's more like it teaches you how to teach yourself how to do stuff, you know? And like, you're kind of a I would say that you would be like a very a sh very shitty computer scientist if you couldn't, you know, teach yourself new things on a regular basis. Doing this work without, oh, without the degree, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I got the degree and then I almost immediately started working for myself. I mean, I worked for the FBI for a while and the culture there really made it clear that I was never probably going to fit in in a cubicle atmosphere, or at least especially while working for the government, because the people there, um, it was just like your really stereotypical kind of Dilbert type type situation where like morons would get promotions, like people who didn't know what they were doing, but they were really good at schmoozing with the boss and things like that. And then like the dudes who were actually developing stuff um, basically got shit on. And like I saw enough of that happening that I, was, I, I knew that I didn't want to work there like almost uh, almost immediately. So I just I figured out a way to make money on my own after that. Another thing that annoyed me was like when I interviewed with them, they basically laughed at me that I had a, 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 a what is it a master's degree because um, they wanted to know about my thesis, right? And so I tell them about it. And, and then they're basically like to my face trying to tell me that that's not worth as much as like actual industry experience. And I'm like, dude, it's like, I wasn't working alone, man. Like uh, uh, at various points in this project, I had partners, you know, it's like, it's not that different than enterprise type crap. You know, it's, uh, certainly it's different, but it's not, you know, if you can, if you can write, if you can write a thesis and collaborate with other grad students, you can probably write some shitty enterprise code, you know, <laughs> it's, you would never fit into any large office environment, sir. Exactly. Like, I would need a bunch of irreverent nerds around me or to work for myself from home to, to really... Like, it's not that I'm antisocial, dude. I love people. I just need it to be like a meritocracy environment, you know? What I can't handle is, like, watching totally incompetent douchebags um, excel while dragging down, you know, the, the actual work. I had this guy... Um, 
and I, I don't want to get into too many details because it's like secret clearance type stuff. I can't, I can't actually talk about um, details like I'm legally not allowed. But what I can say, I can be vague about it. We had this guy who was like, it was like a database thing, okay? Uh, and again, I, I'm not going to say what it was related to. It was just, it was like something to do with databases. And this, this dude was just like, I don't know, I couldn't tell if he was lying to the boss, you know, uh, or if he was just like literally trying to get out of doing work. But, uh, and any, any, any programmers here will be able to understand like what, why this is ridiculous. He, <laughs> he claimed that he needed this, this library, right? So that he could interact with, um, you know, so that, so that he could write, um, so that he could hook into the database with his, with the programming language he was using. And it's like, it was, you know, it's like stuff like Java or, or, or anything else really has things like the JDBC built right in where you can talk to MySQL or whatever else very easily. But he wanted this special little custom library he was used to working with. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, you can, you can do queries. You know, you don't need approval from the security guys to use whatever janky, stupid bullshit you're used to using. Like, just, just mess with this built-in library that does everything that you want. <laughs> and, and it's like, somehow he's getting away with just, like, bullshitting like this. And then for, like, weeks on end, the dude's not producing anything. But he's, like, the best-treated guy on the team, you know? And it was little things like that. It really just, like, I was just, like, I knew I had to get out of there and figure out a way to, to make money on my own, you know? Because it's like that stuff is just like intolerable to me. Meanwhile, we had like this tester dude who, um, and I think I've told this story on stream before, but I, I, I'm happy to tell it again. Like we had this tester guy who wasn't really getting a lot done because nobody was producing code except for like me and maybe one other guy. Um, and so like his test cases, he had nothing to do with them. You know, like he can't implement test cases if there's no code to test. Um, and I saw him like just like getting bullied because the guy was kind of a kind of a soft guy, you know, like a little bit weak willed sounding, but a perfectly nice person. And it's like, it's just wild, man. Like they're just mistreating this dude. And I'm just like watching this and I'm thinking like, this is, this is the FBI, man. Like this is, people are supposed to be behaving not like they're in high school, man. I mean, to be fair, it was like contracting. It wasn't the actual FBI. It was like a company that did contracting for them. But even so, the environment was just like, sort of intolerable, you know, and this was not playful stuff, like, they were just, like, treating this guy like dog shit, and he was a perfectly competent guy, you know, he was not, he was not, like, dumb, he was not shirking responsibilities, you know, he was doing his job, he was just, like, sort of unable to do his job because, because of everybody else on the team, you know. Okay, minus telly. I work where they build military air aircraft and everyone is a high schooler still, Talis says. Yeah, um, I hate it, but, you know, that seems common, man. Like, everybody is a high school. Everybody's a high schooler in the dungeon crawl community. You know, it's a bunch of 20, 30, even 40-year-old high schoolers. Like, some of the devs for this game, check this out, some of the devs for this game are literal college professors, like people with doctorates, and yet they are acting almost exactly like you would imagine that a high school girl would act, you know, um, like, I'll even, you know, like, one of them has verbatim, almost verbatim, well, not, not verbatim, but has outright stated that he's giving me the silent treatment, <laughs> you know, which is like, you can't get more, you know, like, junior high girl than that, you know, but he's like, he, he literally said to me, you make crawl on fun, because I was running a, uh, an info bot, you know, that would uh, bypass all the infobot bans that um, that got put into place, and somehow that that makes the game not fun, you know. And, and so the response to that is he's going to give me the silent treatment and not answer questions if I if I have issues with like you know I have bugs or things like that. Um, it's just mind blowing, man. And that's like that really is the most immature thing I can think of, really. Um, but the dude the dude's a professor, you know. So I think you're right, like, people just don't, people don't grow up, um, to a large degree. I, I knew people in literal high school who are more mature than some of the people that are in their 30s and 40s, you know, that I've met in my adult life. And I think that's unfortunate. <laughs> and I think, I think that being, being professional like that is a difficult thing to do, you know, and I'm not always, uh, the best at it myself, but... 
like I try, I at least make the attempt, you know. Oh, dude, look at all this tabbing. We could get petrified here. We did get petrified. I'm all for professionalism when work needs to get done. Yeah, I mean, screwing around is fun. Um, like, I like playful atmospheres, you know? It's like being irreverent and cracking jokes and whatnot is fine by me. I like that. You know, you got to keep it light. Like, there's there's two different kinds of professionalism, okay? There's, there's like, PC sort of you-can't-say-that-here kind of professionalism, and that sort of bores me, I guess. Um, although I understand the need for it in, in certain situations, you know. Uh, but I do think it kind of stifles, you know, if you have a team of, say, programmers, that team is going to work better when everybody feels like they're not being uh, held down by the boots of the man, so to speak. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be able to I want to be able to crack jokes, really simple dad jokes, like that's what she said, without, um, like, without being yelled at, you know. I once, I once got, like, s sort of reprimanded by one of my coworkers at the FBI because I said the word Guido, and he's like, somebody could get mad at that. That's racist against Italians. And I was saying it in reference to the show Jersey Shore, and they literally call themselves Guidos. You know, that's like the subculture. It has nothing to do... I don't even think that's like a slur against Italians. And if it was, I mean, what, do you think I hate Italians? <laughs> like, that's bizarre. Um, you know, but I was just talking about, like, that's what they call themselves, Guidos. Like, that's not a... It's not insulting. Um, I've, never, I've never heard of anybody in my life using that as, a, as an insult against Italians. I guess it might. It might be. I mean, salty, okay, it's a mild slur. I didn't know that. But, like, I've never heard of anybody getting offended by it, you know? Um, I don't know, I guess, like, I'm Polish, and I guess you could say Polak is ki kind of, you know, in some cases you could use it as a slur, but, like, I always thought it just meant, like, Polish person. You know, I would never get offended about that. But, like, I mean, I would understand if it was, like, a real, you know what I mean, like a slur, but, like, it's... It's like that kind of thing, especially in the con the context. The context matters. And, and before my Twitch account gets banned, <laughs> of course they'd have to ban anybody who's like discussing um, that stuff banned for Guido. I don't know, that's ridiculous. But um, this is a TV show, man. What's the slur for Russians? I mean, I don't want to get this. I don't want this to become like a chat about what what slurs are, but because that really will get my Twitch banned. Also, hey, Karl Marx, what's up, man? I mean, yeah, salty. Like, I I would appreciate. Like, I would have appreciated it more if like he was actually an Italian dude and was actually upset about it. But the guy, the guy doing that was just he, he wasn't he wasn't like offended himself. He basically just, like, wanted to police me, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like, okay. And that's, like, that's not the hill I'm going to die on, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I wasn't, like, really that broken up about it or anything. I just, it's just one of those little things that sort of annoys me. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of quote-unquote professionalism. And it's like, I could see it, like, don't say that kind of thing in front of a client or whatever, but, like, when you're just hanging out with your team, you know nobody's going to have an issue with it. Like, what's the big deal? And he's like, oh, you better be careful. And I'm like, all, all right, man. You know, okay. But the kind of professionalism I'm talking about is, like, professional disagreements, you know? Um, you could, like, have a technical or even a political difference with somebody, but you still need to be expected to work with them in a mature and sort of adult fashion, you know? Your code is bad and you should feel bad. Like, open disc yeah, open discourse is important. Um, and, like, especially if I'm in a work environment, whether I'm the boss or an employer or whatever, like, I think it's hugely important for everybody to feel like they're not going to get shit on for having an opinion, even if I disagree with that, op uh, that opinion, you know. People need to feel... People need to feel really, really comfortable saying what they think. Uh, and that's, like, if they don't, then... 
you might be stifling your employees from giving some really good ideas for, for projects and things, you know. Look at what happened to that James Damore guy. You know, he was just driven out of Google. Um, and he could have, you know, there's another universe where, where like, he could have, his writing could have been taken very seriously and uh, maybe could have changed the corporate culture in, in Google to be, like, slightly less insane. But instead, they double down, they, they, they fire the dude, you know, and they treat him like, they treat him like he's the devil. I don't know if you guys know about James Damore. He said men and women are different. Whee! I mean, that's the thing. Like, does anybody deny that? Like, that, that men and women are different in some ways? I mean, it's like, it's like, it's a basic fact. I mean, <laughs> of course there are differences between men and women. I mean, it's biology. I, I probably shouldn't get into specifics or anything, but like, because obviously this is Twitch and who knows, who knows what you get banned for, but I mean, I don't think we've gotten to the point where people are denying that there are differences between men and women, and yet this dude, this dude gets fired for essentially saying that, you know, sort of mind-blowing. Dude, let's kill this hornet. Guardian Serpent. You know what happened? I got shafted to layer 6 from like layer 4 and I was talking and tabbing and I barely even noticed. That's how you know I'm playing a deep dwarf, man. <laughs> that's, that's how you know I'm playing a deep dwarf. How wild. Just, just tabbing through layer 6 super early. He refuses to discuss women's biology banned for misogyny. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm treading dangerously closely to stuff other people have been banned for on Twitch, which I didn't agree with, but, I mean, it's not like I can't censor myself when, when, when necessary on certain platforms if those are the rules. I mean, even if I do disagree with it, I do wish that there was, like, an alternative to Twitch. Um, you know, I think that healthy competition is very good. It might even be good for Twitch uh, in some ways. You know, because it would encourage them to up their game, so to speak. But the fact that there's no realistic competitor to Twitch, I think that leads to any company stagnating a little bit, you know? That's one of the reasons Google is doing totally insane stuff. Like, Google is, um... Oh, we got the broad X. Um, Go Google's doing this thing where they're making it almost impossible to ad block. you know, from what I understand. Unless you're, like, an enterprise user. <laughs> Which is insane. Yeah, Anani Badger, if, if I ever get, I'll tell you what, if I ever get shit canned off of Twitch, and maybe even if I don't, dude, I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make you a promise right now. The next article that I write on rosecrypto.com, which I haven't, um, I haven't written an article in a while, so I really need to, um, I'm going to write an article about DLive for you, okay? And we'll see. I'll let you know what I think about it. Use uBlock Origin and uBlock Matrix. Um, no, like the extensions actually don't will not will not work on Chrome anymore. Um, you know, that's why I use Brave. Yeah, salty. I mean, I don't I don't disagree. Like, I don't think that people. I mean, it really depends on the context, man. Like. Uh, George Carlin was a comedian, and he was a fairly left guy. He was certainly not a racist, but he did use very produ provocative language in his, um, in, in his uh, comedy, right? And he always talked a lot about how the context matters. And I, I can't get too specific about that, because again, I'm on Twitch. But, um, oh yeah, um, Brave is, is just a, Brave is actually on Google Chromium. Um, oh wait, you, you know that, of course you know that. But yeah, context is super important. And like, dude, if you're if you're working a job and you're dropping racial slurs all the time, I mean, like, I'm not gonna say that you shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, I, of course, if you're if you're reflecting super badly on the company, I understand getting fired for something like that. But I can't even say George Carlin bits on Twitch or you'll get banned. Exactly. I had a very specific one that I wanted to give, but I know I can't say it. You know. Um, and there's 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 it's unfortunate because it's like super. Uh, it's a super good example of, of what I'm talking about, but we're just, we'll just have to live without it. Um, but I mean, the guy was the guy was fairly leftist. Like he was not a racist. He he had very you know I'm sure he had very strong opinions on this kind of thing. 
Uh, but today, somebody would probably call him a Nazi just for using words in, a, in what I believe is a totally appropriate context, you know? But yeah, I do kind of question, like, what, what is hate speech, you know? Um, it seems to be this sort of nebulous, um, nebulously defined thing. Like, if we're talking about, like, throwing racial slurs at people just to harass them or whatever, I mean, I, obviously that's a bad thing. You know, there's no question about that. Don't, that's, I, I don't think that's, that's a good thing to do. And I, I don't think, I think that you would, it would be rare for you to find somebody who would think that that's a good thing to do. Um, even though people seem to think that like bigots are lurking behind every corner. Um, my experience both in real life and on the internet has been that in general, if someone is acting like, like that really blatantly, um, you know, just behaving like a, like a scumbag, you know, and just insulting people, whether it's like, um, racially motivated or not, generally the people around them will say, um, cut that shit out, you know? But I mean, I, I don't know, like I said, I've been called a Nazi for supporting freedom of speech. So it's like, I do think this whole kind of nebulous definition of like, what is, what is hate speech? What's this? What's that? It's, it's something that people do use, uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, it's just used as, used as a way to like shut down conversation, you know. Um, there there are people that would get mad at me for saying, and this is a statistical fact. If I said um, men are physically stronger than women on average, you know, that's a biological fact, man. Like that's that's just reality. Like bi biologically biologically male people on average, are much physically, like, physically stronger, stronger by a significant, significant degree. That's just science. But there are people that would call me a bigot for saying that. Um, there are people that would say that, that that is hate speech. I don't think that's a majority of people. I think that's kind of like a wacko minority of people who, who would believe that. But that doesn't change the fact that there are people out there who would accuse me of... Um, all sorts of, you know, really horrible things just, just for saying something that is like a scientifically verifiable fact, you know? Um, and that should concern you a bit. And that's, that what's, that's what gives me pause when, you know, it's like so, so simple to shut somebody up by accusing them of some, you know, really horrible sin, because I mean, there really is no greater sin in, in modern uh, society than, than to be accused of something like hate speech, you know, like, it's very, it's very difficult to find something that people will shit on you more than if they believe that, that you're that kind of person, you know? Oh, dude, it's Rupert. Also, yeah, Nani Badger, I, uh, I got your ping. I'll, I'll hit you up, man. Oh, man. So Rupert the Wild, 26% para. This is one of the few things that might actually give my Deep Dwarf some pause, uh, some, some, some opportunity to reflect on how to, how to defeat him. What do we do? I guess I can just use servants. See what they can do. I want him to zerk so he can't paralyze me. Just use lightning. There we go. Not bad. We haven't even traded any invocations at all. We just relied on zero invoke uh, minor demon. It's pretty cool, right? Okay. Identify this amulet. It's regen. does nothing for us. We have two acquirement I've just been sitting on. Armor. Pop on this helmet. Okay, we won't pop on this helmet. We've got a acid dragon to kill. Now we'll pop on the helmet. See invisible. That's really helpful. Um, acquirement again. What do I want to acquire? Probably armor again. A distressingly furry buckler. That has our core on it, and it has blink, which is nice. But I think I'd rather just have a plus four large shield. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. All right, um, scroll of random uselessness. OK. 
Okay, we ran up on this um, dragon. We have we actually have Profire. It was unidentified. I just kind of rolled the dice, and that's it. Cool. So now we can't take 75 damage again. I'm going to heal a couple of times, and then we'll just we'll just go for it. Not bad, not bad. Petrified immediately as we roll up on the Basilisk, but, you know, it didn't happen with a... Oh boy, now it's happening with a Komodo Dragon. Let's use Fear. It's AF. You don't want to be petrified next to a Komodo Dragon. They do like 34 damage per hit. They will own you. I actually lost a Deep Dwarf Streak one time due to that exact mechanic. Hell yeah, plus two gloves of Uretum Newell's approval, dex plus six, that's huge. That's a huge uh, defensive bonus. All right. Um, brand weapon, I don't want to rebrand a broad axe of freezing, it's quite nice. So We're almost up to Mendeley on that, by the way. We only need to get to 18. It was a ghost. There was a ghost on this floor. Great Mace of Chaos. Zewo's Ghost, Sticky Flame, Fireball, Conjure Flame. Well, we have RF, but that's a Chaos thing, and what am I really going to get for doing this? A wand? I mean, it'd be nice to have a wand, but I don't really see the need to take the risk. I want to try on some of the stuff. Maybe we can get, um, maybe we can get body armor of MR plus. Do we have any cancellation? We have two. I'm gonna drink one so I don't get contaminated. Remove curse on this scale mail. Put on my regular plate. If I get another, if I get a pip of MR. I could actually be immune to Orc Sorcerers is the thing. Cursed, cursed robe, okay. Hmm. Well, we have a lot of evokes. We even have a lot of wands and stuff for sale. Why don't we um, buy a few more things? Sack is a good save. Um, Enslave is a good save. And then Ice Blast finishes things off. I buy the other sack of spiders, but we can't afford it. Um, but instead I am going to buy... Do we have digging? We do have digging already. I'm going to buy Paralysis. That'll be good for now. That'll be good for now. All right. Um. Hmm. Don't have our poise, although we could if we wanted to. Don't have our lek. Do we have six potions of curing? It's probably reasonably safe for us to go into Snake Pit. Do we have we have haste, we have agility, do we have might? Yes we do. Pro cold. Try to use positioning to wreck this stuff. If 
pretty tame snake one so far. Hmm. Okay, that worked out. It might not have <laughs> if he had decided to like iron shot us a bunch. Heisel can put us to sleep. We don't have our poise. Shit, I should use a potion of resistance. Very dangerous guy. Actually, I'm going to acid him. I'm going to, um, scatter shot. Nope, that doesn't do it. Mr. Servant. Heal myself. Heal. Drink curing to get this poison off. There we go. Eisel is one of the toughest uniques in the game, believe it or not. All right. All right. This might be a good stopping point, actually. I've been streaming for a little while. Maybe I'll finish this floor. Gonna be a pretty straightforward snake pit though, you know. On a character like this. Even even without our lack our poise or anything really. It's just being a deep war fighter. You just smash through everything, you know. Especially with the fact that we have large shield, plate mail, and broad axe. Hey, Curse String of Teleportation, let's not have that on. Don't care about getting surrounded, we have an X. A lot of early Greater Nagas, it's kind of interesting. This is dangerous. Um, let's blink just to be safe. A lot, a lot of damage possible here. It actually fails, which is wild. Let's try again. Actually succeeds this time. Great. Um, we're going to fog so that the Guardian Serpent can't see us. Um, let's haste because this is kind of dangerous. Very dangerous, in fact. Drink curing. Um, I want to dig and hope he doesn't surround me. He doesn't. Good. Also, I'm going to drink a resistance so that his poison bolts don't wreck me. And agility. Dig again here. Well, that's not going to work. Dig again here. Rest. Okay. Um, let's heal. 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 Swing. How obnoxious. Certainly not an unstoppable character yet, even if I am a deep dwarf. <laughs> Oh, 
don't think I've touched my skills other than turning evocations on since the beginning of the game. Dude, I used up both of my blink. What a shame. Shiny scale mail. See, that could be MR plus, and I want to try it on, but I don't have any more remove curse available. Chant up the broad axe. That's kind of cute. We've got a um, city and statue guarding all this gold. Pepper's Ghost. What a cute name for a cat. The apparition of Pepper, the warrior, a journeyman felid berserker of Trog. I bet this is from CSDC. Up to 50 damage. Uh, this is a Skipperoni type vault. Maybe wondering why I'm ice blasting, and it's because fighting my way through this warrior could take a really long time. First plus four amulet of reflection, that seems good enough to wear for a long time. Hexes work really well against the uh, shock serpents in here. Dude, I wish I had bought the Lamp of Fire. Maybe we can go back and get that ASAP. Okay, this is a good stopping point. Um, I've been streaming for a bit. I think that, um, I mean, yeah, it's Deep Dwarf, so it'll be really straightforward to roll on through this entire game. I didn't even really want to play it, but, um, you know, if I'm trying to copy Elliptic Streak, I have to, you know, I have, I have to uh, faithfully reproduce it, I think. At least that's the idea. So, all right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed. But until next time, I'm signing out. Did you know that there are many ways that you can help support this channel? Read about them on rosecrypto.com support. At Rose Crypto, you can learn all about cool things like the Brave web browser, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.